Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I'm your host, Matt Lagore, and my show is about entrepreneurism, business, inspiration, uh, really uh, mostly about uh, being an entrepreneur, uh, but all those things are really tie into it, you know, business and inspiration. Uh, usually uh, inspiration leads to something which can lead to a business. Uh, but the big thing in life is that you can't do it all on your own. Uh, it's impossible to do it yourself. I know we hear a lot of that, you know, in uh, America about, you know, he did it himself. He, he's, a, he's a self-made man. It's really not true. It doesn't mean you can't have some success doing it yourself, but there's a lot of struggle that comes with it. You really do need the help of other people to really, truly be a great success. Uh, and my purpose on my show is to help people to find that success. Now, all the answers are certainly not going to come just from me. Uh, probably most of them aren't going to come from me. And I usually, uh, I always have people on who are successful uh, at what they do. And they help to give people ideas, inspiration, you name it. So one of the things I wanted to touch on today was public speaking. Uh, I think public speaking may be one of the things, maybe the greatest fear people have in life. Now, that's what I thought. I thought public speaking was the number one fear, uh, even superseding death. But actually, my guest today told me that people are more afraid of snakes than public speaking, which uh, makes a lot of sense. Now, if you've ever had to do a public speaking event and uh, you've never done it before, it truly feels like dying is a, is a viable option at that moment. It can fill you with so much anxiety, the thought of having to get up and speak. And, and what that anxiety is, is fear. And the fear is, you know, the fear of failure, the fear of ridicule. And the worst of all is the fear of uh, looking stupid. Uh, nobody wants to look stupid. So what do you do if you're going to have to publicly speak? Now, you might say to me, Matt, I just, you know what, I'm just going to die. It would be a lot easier. I'm fine with it. I lived a good life. But if you don't want to die, then I have the perfect person for you today. Uh, she specializes in helping people uh, speak publicly, uh, increase their uh, performance in front of the camera. And uh, today we're going to have Linda Ugelo on the show with me. All right. Linda, welcome to the show. It's great to be here, Matt. Thanks so much. So did I say the name right, Linda Ugelo? We... Well, I think it's a kind of a name that different families say it different ways. And yeah. Ugolo may be a way that someone else in the family tree says. Uh, in my family, we say Ugolo. Ugolo. All right. It's, it's never truly a Matt Lagore show unless I say the guest's name wrong, at least once. So I did it. All right. And pretty much every show I've done, Check. I've always got the name wrong. Check. So, so say it again. Ugolo. Ugolo. Think of Ugolo. Ugolo. All right. All right. And you kind of specialize in helping people to glow. I Am do. I right? Uh, that's exactly right. And glow from the inside, not inside. just glow kind of superficially, but to feel like you are glowing. Right, because it's really easy to look good on the outside and not really have a lot going on on the inside. Yeah. So what's, uh, if we wanted to get in touch with you, like what would be a good way to see kind of like what your talents are? My web page, my website is a great place to begin. Mm -hmm. LindaUgolo.com. LindaUgolo.com. Mm -hmm. All right. And we'll be able to see it on the screen there. Right. Uh, take a look at it. So, all right. So let's just go. Can you just touch on that public speaking? Because nowadays, um, if, you're, if you're any kind of salesperson, you really do have to speak publicly. And the really, the truth of life is that we have to be selling. You have to sell something all the time. You're always selling yourself. Um, you know, do you, do, you, do you work with people who publicly speak and what else? Who want to make videos for their businesses, who, yeah. as you mentioned, make sales, who want to train, be training people mm -hmm. in their work. I have a client who just needed to pull it together to train a team in Europe of 60 writers, mm -hmm. and she was afraid to speak to more than two people at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I've been publicly speaking since I was nine years old. I was, I, I, you know, look at it now, I was blessed to start speaking uh, when I was nine, all right? I didn't choose to, it was just something my parents told me I had to, the church I belonged to, it's what I had to do. Now, I, I remember being so frightened to, the, to do that. But after you accomplish it, the feeling is so satisfying. I've never had a more satisfying feeling. But I will say that there's never a time that even like sitting here in this interview with you, that I don't feel some anxiety and nervousness before mm. I start. Mm. Do you, how about you? Do you feel that way at all? 
I feel a little bit of excitement right now. Uh -huh. So that's not to say there aren't places where the stakes feel really high or mm -hmm. it's really new. Yeah. But this is, this is what I believe, that the fear that we experience being seen and heard is not so much about what's happening in the present as much as what happened to us in the past. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit before the show about being a kid mm -hmm. and how children are delighted to be the center of attention. You know, just think of the toddler who is mm -hmm. just learning to stand and they're taking their first steps and everyone's around them, you know, grinning and laughing and clapping and encouraging. And that child feels completely relaxed, completely delighted to be the center of attention. But then things happen to us, don't they? You know, mm -hmm. we get, we're told things are good or bad or wrong or right or because they don't fit into the, the culture around us for whatever reason, in school or at home or at church. Yeah. So we, and we uh, take those in and we, we make assumptions about what all that means. And then when it goes to putting ourselves out there, there's that, th those little imprints the, that linger inside us that recreate a pattern of neurophysiology that says, danger, mm -hmm. remember, and it may not even be conscious. And so while those things are still kind of like open apps in the background of a computer, <laughs> yeah. and we, we don't, like, why is this computer slowing down? And then if you close everything down, oh my God, I can't believe that's open and that's open and that's open. And it's using up all the mental bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. And I really think that once we are, can be curious enough to think, well, what might have happened in my past that made me uncomfortable making a phone call? Or, you know, like one client I had, her mother always said, oh, I hate when people call us. Yeah. It's such an interruption. So that's what her mother used to say. That's and she used mother, to hear it, right? And yeah. she used to hear it. And so as a salesperson, she f is afraid of making calls. Yeah. But the other thing that happened was that in high school, she asked to sit down at a table with a girl that she liked. She didn't know her well. And the girl said, sorry, we're saving this for someone else. Mm -hmm. And she sat alone. And then notice that nobody sat at that table. Mm -hmm. And she carried it all her life. And she didn't even realize how upsetting it was. But when she thought, you know, well, this did happen. And as she told the story, she said, I can't believe how upset I feel. Still, I haven't thought about this for a long time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's conscious, sometimes it's not. Yeah, they say like, uh, you know, uh, the moment of consciousness uh, for, for a human being is somewhere around five, six years old. It's like when you finally realize like, whoa, wait a minute, people can see me. You know, because you watch kids and they, they skip around and they jump. You know, I, I remember I was at like a big event um, and there was like, you know, thousands of people there. And I was walking in the hallway uh, around the arena, just like in between the sessions and stuff. And this girl, she must have been like 11 or 12, was just like bouncing and skipping through the crowd, like in her own world. And I watched her and it was like, I was like, oh my God, in, a, in like six months, she'll never do that again. She will never skip through a crowd just in her own world having the best time because she's not going to want to look stupid as a, as a young lady. You know, because she was just on that cusp where she was still a child and almost yeah. a young lady, you know. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I was like, where, at what point do we decide we can't be kids anymore? Um, at what point, like if you go to a mall, children need to run everywhere. Like they are in a hurry. Like if you tell them, go get something, they run, all right. And at what point do we decide we don't need to run anymore? And I thought it would be funny if you ever did like a, a, like a little comedy skit of people, of adults, doing what children do. The same way, just unconsciously, you know, running down the hall to get somewhere, you know, skipping, singing, doing whatever they do. You know, we lose that at some point. I don't know where that is exactly, but we do. Now, what, what, what did you do? Before you did this, you did something else, right? Absolutely. In fact, I wasn't a comfortable public speaker at all, mm -hmm. at all. I, luckily, I found a way to express myself through dance and music, and I was a performer for 30, more than 35 years. Yeah. And that gave me lots of opportunities to overcome my self-consciousness on stage because I was going on stage a lot and I would feel self-conscious a lot. 
and I studied it. I actually um, went to a graduate program and I got a degree in expressive therapies specializing in movement studies and that what I was discovering there really helped me get comfortable being seen mm -hmm. not heard but seen and from that point on I thought oh my god this is I feel I feel completely at ease I was on national TV in Morocco in Bulgaria cameras all around my eyes closed dancing and I felt completely like it was just you and me. Mm -hmm. And of course, for some people, just having one witness would be hard. Yeah, so you were, you were a dancer. You, you, did you work in a company? Was that uh, what well, I'm part of, it's a world music ensemble called mm -hmm. Labana. Yeah. It's, yeah, so we danced, uh, we sung, and I was the principal dancer, we yeah. sang. We got it. We got it. <laughs> so what's it like though? Like, I, I've often thought about that. I've been to like, um, you know, the Nutcracker or something like that, Swan Lake. And I see these people dancing, and they're really, like, giving it all. You know, what is that like, like, to get up and dance? I mean, is there a measure, at first, is there a measure of self-consciousness uh, self as you're dancing? Like, do I, do, I look, do I look all right? Am I doing it right? Or is it like, uh, say, I mean, the only thing I could equate it to is, like, maybe playing sports, like playing basketball in front of a crowd. You don't really think about it. You're just doing your thing. Is that what it's like? I think it's individual. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the former. I was concerned with what does it feel, uh, what does it look like, is it good enough, what are people going to think, all those things. Until I discovered to pay more attention to what's going on inside mm -hmm. and my experience and then let other people just be witnesses to what my experience was. How old were you then when you came to that realization? Um, my late 20s, 30s. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's a good young age. Yeah, a good young age. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but to come to that realization Absolutely. too, you know. But then, as I, at, not too long ago, several years ago, when I decided to become an entrepreneur and a coach, I, it was suggested to me that I help people get comfortable on stage because I clearly, because when they saw me on stage, they thought, I want what Linda has. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that. I thought, yes, I, I'm sure that a lot of people need this. I did a lot of research on it and market research. And I talked to lots of people, you know, is this something that you'd be interested in? And how do you struggle? And what would you want from a coach? And one person said to me, well, I'd want to know that you've made a lot of videos. I was helping them with videos first before I got into public speaking. And I thought, well, I've made some videos, but I haven't made a lot. So I better get my myself going here and I decided to try a a new app on the telephone called Periscope it's live streaming now yep. you've got Facebook live Periscope was one of the first yep. ones and so here I am hover, my fingers hovering over the broadcast button my heart is pounding out of my chest and I'm thinking I hate this feeling and it wasn't my first time it was the 75th time <laughs> yeah okay and then I realized for me at least it's not about doing it and you'll get confident. There was something that I had been doing every day, 75 times, I was still feeling nervous. And that's when I decided I'm, a, I'm an expressive therapist. I, I can dig into this. If I was coaching someone in here about this issue, what would I do? And I coached myself. And in a matter of days, it completely changed for me. Mm -hmm because I felt like I was able to dig down. I was, so I have a three-part process. Okay, let's hear it. One is to understand that fear is not one big single thing. It's an accumulation of lots of bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. So have some curiosity, like we said before, and look, what, what might be impacting me? Number two, to find a way to clear them away. And it might be forgiveness, it might be journaling, it might be just, Dancing and releasing might be going to church and asking God to help you, you know, take this away. It could be anything. Number three, it's replacing those old patterns that are in our physiology, those imprints that are in our ph physiology with new patterns, ones that expand you, ones that make you feel grounded, open-hearted, confident, clear, mm -hmm. playful, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you want that you, there's a way of replacing them and practicing that new experience 
that then as you come on TV each time, you can tune into those places, those new patterns, say, oh, there's that little trigger, that sensation. That's my reminder. That's my reminder, ding, Yeah. to do the kinds of things that I want to do to open myself to the new pattern of how I want to experience this. I had that experience uh, several times, but the biggest time I, I can remember recently is I used to do a radio show before this. And the very first time I was going to do the radio show, I'd never done a radio show before. And I'm going up to do a show and interview somebody. Uh, I, was, I was absolutely like having the most anxious night, anxiety ridden. I couldn't sleep. And I thought to myself, I was like, what, what am I afraid of? And I went through the things, failure, looking stupid, not doing a good job, letting people down. And I realized that that was a very common pattern in my life. Like negative thinking was very prevalent in my life as a child. It was dominant negativity. So I thought to myself, really, there's no evidence that it's going to go badly. I'm very well prepared. I want to do it. The people who are going to, my guest wants to be there. The producer wants to produce it. The evidence wasn't there that it was going to go badly. The evidence was there that it would probably go very well. And I, as soon as I was able to replace that thought, I fell asleep. Now, I was still nervous and everything, but not as, not, not that anxiety ridden where I felt like I was going to die. Yes. You know? And the other thing I thought was, well, hey, probably no one's going to watch listen anyway, so what's the big deal? Uh -huh. Yeah, you can, you can psych yourself into lots of ways, which is really helpful. You know, our brains are so powerful. And I think that's the message here is that we can utilize our capabilities in many ways, like fear, it's in our imagination. It's also mm -hmm. in our physiology, mm -hmm. I think. But if you can create a different imagination, then you can create a different outcome. Different reality. And a different reality yeah, for yourself. Yeah. So, okay, so now, like, you, you have uh, the website and it, it, you, you do coaching, right? Yes, I coach one-on-one -on -one and I have done group programs. I've done mm -hmm. live workshops. They'll be there in the future as well. And you also do your own show, right? I have my own show, yes. And what's that called? It's called Women Inspired. Women Inspired, And nice. I speak to entrepreneurs, change makers, artists, and healers about how they put their dreams into action. So mm -hmm. we get behind the scenes a little bit about how do you get traction. Yeah. Talk about what they do, but we, I also like to find out, well, you know, how did you get going? Mm -hmm. And how did you, like, because I want to inspire people who maybe are thinking about creating a business or they're in the beginnings and their challenges, as you mentioned. Good. Me too. That's exactly my purpose. All right. You just nailed it. So I want to ask you, because obviously my show kind of focuses very similar to yours. How did you get traction? Well, it's interesting. There, there are a couple of ways. I think visibility is yeah. huge. And that's why I, I feel passionate about this, because I feel that we all have our perspective, and we're all here to share our perspective. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just one of my core beliefs, that everyone can be a teacher to us. Anybody yeah. can teach us a lesson. So let's, if we also think that we are one of those people, that it's important for us to share our views. And if we are afraid because we're concerned of being rejected, that's not helping anybody. That's not sharing our viewpoint, which only we can see. It's the proverbial light under the basket, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what was your original question? How did you get traction? Yes. So, so you decided. So I let, decided let, to get visibility. Now, the first thing I did was website. And truthfully, I would not advise that. Mm -hmm. I think that takes a lot of time. It takes money. I think it's better to share what you want to do with all the people that you know and say, do you know anyone who would who could use this help? Mm -hmm. I think that's what I would have done, number one. Yeah. But instead, I got sidetracked. But what also really helped me once I did both of those things is to get myself out there. So Because if I have a gift to share and I know what I do works and it does, then how are people going to find me if, I, if they don't see me? Yeah. So I start to go on podcasts, starting to go on TV shows. Mm -hmm writing blog posts, Facebook Live, mm -hmm. just letting people know, I'm here if you need help. Nice. So at one point, let's just go back to the beginning. At one point, 
you were a performer, right? A dancer, a singer. And then you decided to be uh, someone of, uh, of inspiration to coach and help people to get what they want, right? So you had that thought to do that. So when you had that thought, how long did you like have that thought in your head before you did something? Oh, yeah. So actually, that thought came after several iterations. Mm -hmm. So actually, the first thing I did when I, I decided, um, my husband's an entrepreneur, yep. and I watched him grow from nothing, from zero, to having 70 employees over 20 years. Wow. All on his own. Mm -hmm. I found that really inspiring. And maybe year 15 or no, year 10 or 12, when my, my I used to homeschool and that was my focus. Mm -hmm. But when my daughter went to school, I had time. And I thought, okay, what am I gonna do? And I wanna, I wanna have a business. And I went into farming, organic farming. Mm -hmm. That's not time consuming at all. Not at all. And, but at the same time, I was taking an online business course. Mm -hmm. And I'm weeding the onions, listening to the modules. And at some point I thought, you know what? It's cool being an organic farmer. I like saying I grow specialty vegetables for local restaurants. Kind of has a cachet about it. Yeah. But I thought, I'm supposed to make a bigger impact. I'm not, you know, I just stood up from the onions and thought, this is cool, but I'm supposed to have a bigger impact. And I always thought, oh, that's just grandiose. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, but no, if I have that desire, then I need to follow it. Because if I get to the end of my life and I haven't done that, that's going to be regret. Yes, yes. And I have no idea. I didn't have any idea how I was going to, what I was going to do. But I thought, I'm going to get online. I'm just going to join groups. I'm going to listen in and see what people are struggling with and what I can help with them with. And that's how I got started. That's excellent. See, that's a great, I love the way you said it. You were doing something that had like a nice ring to it. Fresh, organic vegetables, right? Everybody wants that. Uh, but it really wasn't you. It wasn't you. It is somebody, and it's perfect for somebody. Uh, it was perfect for me for those seven years. Yeah, yeah but it didn't, it, at some point, you realized there was bigger things. Now, there's an expression, and I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard people say it, that when you pray, you're talking to God. When you have an in, intuition inside you that gives you an idea or thought, that's God talking to you, and you should listen. Now, it's easy to dismiss that and be like, no, it's not. It's just a thought, all right? I don't know what it is. Nobody really knows, but I do like that premise and that idea. I love that, yeah. and it gave me chills when you said that. Oh, good. I'm glad that was my intent to give you some chills. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's like all this energy around us in the universe that we ignore, you know, and think it's not real. You know, but, you know, we, there's things we'll accept as true. We accept gravity's true, right? Because why? Because, you, you know, if I drop that on the floor, it falls on the floor. It's true, right? Because you can see it. It's physical. But there's a lot of stuff that's not physical that's true and real. You know, and those intuitions and those feelings you have really are like your inner self, like that inner greatness in you wanting to come out. But, you know, as we talked, there's so many things to, to, to suppress it, you know. And many times, I'd say most of the time, people's best interest is at heart. And those people who like suppress you and tell you not to do it and everything usually have the same last name as you too. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and they mean well. You know, when I was 18 years old, I don't want to make this show about me because it's, this interview is about you, but I want to tell you one thing. You'll get a kick out of this. When I was 18, I heard an ad on the radio about the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And I was like, Connecticut? Ah, Connecticut, I guess. And they were like located in Wellesley, Massachusetts. I was like, whoa, I live in Newton. That's right down the street. Um, holding, uh, not auditions, but, um, you know, in, you, you could come in and, an open house, basically. And so I was like, well, I'm going to go. And I drove my car down. I went down there. And they said, you know, they told you, you know, you're interested in broadcasting. Uh, th this, is the, you know, this is a good place to start, blah, blah, blah. What we'd like you to do is we want you to do a little radio read. And then we're going to have you do a TV read. And they put you in front of a camera like this. And you, you basically read the news or something. Yeah. And so I did it. And the guy came in. And he was like, well, that was really great. Uh, you know, he goes, I really do think that this is a good field for you. And I was like, I think so too. And so he showed me what I had to do and everything. I went home so excited. I couldn't believe it. I told my dad and he looked at it and said, 
they say that to everybody. They just want your money and kind of like threw it on the table. Mm. And I was crushed mm. and devastated. And I just figured, he's right, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just cast that dream aside. Now, my dad did not want me to be let down. So the first time I did my radio show was about two years ago. And my dad called me up and he goes, I feel terrible. Oh. And I said, why? And he, I go, was it that bad? And he goes, no. He goes, I told you not to do this. And he goes, I should have told you to do it. And I was like, well, you know what, Dad? I said, thank you. I mean, what more can I say? Thank you. I mean, it actually made me feel a lot better, you know? But so I let 30 years go in between there before I said, okay, let me try it. And it wasn't as hard as I thought to get into it. I thought it was like this giant wall to climb. Isn't that interesting? And also, in the end, he was so supportive. Yeah. Yet, yeah. for 30 years, we hang on to that thing of, oh, this obstacle. Mm -hmm. this. And he probably would have been supportive five years later if I'd, if I'd said to him, I really wanted to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Know? Uh, you know, the saying, it's never too late to have a ch happy childhood. Yeah. You know, I've been blessed. My parents are still alive. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we'll talk about that happened so many years ago. And you'd be like, oh, wow, they didn't even mean it, you know. That's or, right. You know? So like, that goes back into what you were talking about before, about how the, you find these little hidden things that are holding you back that you're the only one who's allowing that. And in, in most cases. Yeah, in most cases, At right. At this point yeah, in time, right. yes. And I, and I love the idea of the childhood because I'm actually, this is, you'll hear, you'll be the first to hear, this is like the germ of what I'm hoping my TED Talk to be about. Oh, TED Talk, yeah. Is this experience of childhood that we have that gets suppressed or covered up, but it's still in us. Mm -hmm. Just like it was still in you. And it got a chance to come out into the light. Yeah, yeah. It's that way for all of us. The funny thing is I told a friend who had a radio show, oh, I've always wanted to do that. And he was like a managing partner of this little radio show. He goes, oh, I'll put you on the air when you want to go. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I, I thought it was a joke. Like, yeah, that's nice. Don't tease me. I'm serious. And I was like, really? So that's when I had one of those in, in feelings of intuition where I was like, okay, this is not, a, this is not an accident. This is, this is God. This is the universe. This is whatever you want to call it, directing me to make this step. It was actually very scary. Like, it's easier to kind of stay back than it is to kind of step into something. Of course. Of course. I mean, actually, I heard a woman named Tara Moore speak. She wrote a book called Playing Big. Mm -hmm. And she talks about her speaking with a rabbi who said that in the Bible, there are two kinds of fear. One is the fear of being physically hurt, you mm -hmm. know, of danger, actual danger, mm -hmm. and the fear of being in a space that's bigger than you're used to. Mm -hmm. yeah. The presence of God or an area that you've never been in before. Mm -hmm. And it's basically we have to learn to expand ourselves out into a wider arena so that we can take up more space and feel com comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. So, like you may feel comfortable in the room that you're in, imagine being in a field. Imagine, you know, if you see a, um, on TV a, a scene of a big stadium, pause it if it's like on YouTube, just pause it and just sit with that image of that big stadium. Imagine yourself there, just present with it. It might freak you out, but it might also give you a... a the beginnings of exploring that experience of being in largeness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, you don't want to go from being afraid to speak to one person to being in a stadium. <laughs> you want to take it in little bits and pieces. And like when I practice for a talk, I'll work on my own, then I'll do it with a friend, I might do it with a, a coach. I'll do it with a, several people. I'll try to get a small group together before I go on stage. When I get to a place where I'm going to be on stage, I stand on the stage. I stand up there. If I'm going to be performing with my group and it's somewhere local, I'll go to the church and I'll stand there for, I'll just go in and stand on the stage, look out at the pews or the audience. No one's there, mm -hmm. but just imagining it and feeling that space and feeling what it's like to feel, to be on it. Yeah. 
Yeah. They say that uh, they, um, they did a thing with Olympic athletes where they would have them imagine their um, performance yep. and they monitored their brains and everything. And they, the areas of their brains were, were firing just as if they were really there. So, so, th so imagining and putting yourself in there yes. is, is, is as powerful as doing it Absolutely. and gives you the sense of like feeling it. Absolutely. And I do that with every person I work with, mm -hmm. that kind of visualization. It works tremendously. I mean, it's even just if you're going into a meeting and you don't have, you're like thinking, oh, this is going to be a hard meeting. Putting yourself through a visualization very briefly even of just like, this is how I want to feel. This is how I'm going to feel afterwards. We're going to be smiling at each other. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference. You yeah. go in there with a completely different reality yeah. and you actually have a different experience. In my, that's what I've learned is that you can actually change the outcome. Do you work with men or most or women? Only? I work mostly with women, yeah. but I, I work with men as well. So you work with both, okay? Mm -hmm. But but your your main focus is empowering women. I like the idea of empowering women because I feel that it's time. Yeah, yeah. I have three daughters, so uh, I'm all for that, you know. Uh, and I try to empower them every day, you know, to be to be uh, confident and you know, you, and to be you know to go for it not to be brazen you know but to be like to be to go out and get what you want you know uh and and you know my, my oldest daughter is 27 my youngest is nine you know and it's funny like i look at the 27 i look at the nine you know and they get just the, how quickly it goes you know it goes so fast you know uh and you know you you're always hoping you're doing the right thing but uh i'm really pleased to to meet you uh and pleased to hear what you're doing so how do we get in touch with you it's the best way. Again, lindayugalo.com is my website. All of my social media is Linda Ugalo, Twitter, Facebook. Okay. So we can get you on Facebook? It's Instagram, yeah. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Anything else? LinkedIn. All right. Linda Ugalo. Linda Ugalo. All right. U G E L O W. You could, I, I, get, I, I imagine you can Google, find it, but lindayugalo.com. Mm -hmm. All right. You can see it on the screen there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you want, looking for inspiration, coaching, uh, public speaking. Uh, what about if you're afraid of snakes? Can you help with that? I, I think I could help, but I don't know that I would be the best person. <laughs> I'm only saying that because you're the one who told me that people are more afraid of snakes That's right. than public speaking. That's right. So, Linda, I want to thank you for being on the show. It's been great. Uh, we, uh, I, I, I really appreciate uh, you reaching out to me and having you on. And uh, we'll have you on again in the future. How's that, that sound? That would be fantastic. All right. LindaUgelo.com. I want to thank you for watching The Matt Lagore Show. Uh, you can see me on YouTube, The, the Matt Lagore Show uh, YouTube channel. You can see me on Facebook, The Matt Lagore Show on Facebook. All right. Thanks for watching.